Okay, in these videos, we are gonna talk about writing equations. So this is a situation where you're coming into a problem and it's not written symbolically like the way you're used to seeing it. So for example, you're gonna see something and I have, I have under here, I have um, kind of being funny, but so also being serious, does math equal words? Well, in real terms, yes, because um, if you think about what math is, math is a language we use to describe the world around us. And as far as what math specifically hits is like patterns and how we, how we describe things numerically. So math does absolutely equal words. So it's really important for us to be able to look at a set of words and determine what they mean and then put them in some sort of symbolic terms so that if there is something to be solved, we can solve it. So let's look at this right here. Enough chatter about that. It says eight less than three times the number is negative 23, all right? So there's a lot in there and we're gonna unpack that in a few minutes, but I wanna just you know throw an example of what we're talking about and what you're gonna be asked to do. So you're gonna get something like this and they're gonna be like, write an equation. All right. And, you know, the big first thing you have to, you know, remember is whenever they talk about what an equation is. All right. The first part of equation is equa or if you think of equal. All right. So you're going to be writing something that's always going to have an equal sign in it. That's the big thing. It's not an expression. An expression is when you would just have three X plus seven or something like that. An equation would be where you had three X plus seven equals you know whatever 12 or whatever it, it would be so that's what an equation is and um we'll talk about some of the language and how we know their equations and not um not expressions so let's develop a word bank really quick and you can uh, choose to write this down as we go or you can just you know see if you remember it um I may in person have resources for those of you who have me as a teacher um, where you, I have these little slips of paper a lot of times I give out that have everything on it. But if not, worst case scenario, you can come back to the video and write it down if you need it. So we talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And they all kind of have words that apply to them. So let's start with addition. So the, the first one is the result of an addition problem is called a sum, all right? The result of a subtraction problem is called a difference, all right? So that's how we're getting started here. Sometimes they'll say the sum of blah, 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 and, you'll, and then you should be like, oh, that's an addition problem, or the difference between, and you hear something like that, oh, that's a subtraction problem. So some words that you will see a lot of times that describe um, addition are, you know, the obvious ones are plus, right? And then for a difference, you'll see minus, all right? But some of the ones that are less, you know, or, or another obvious one, added and then subtracted, right? Those are, those are the real obvious ones. Some that you'll see more though, and don't seem as, uh, you know, intuitive, or when they say if something is greater than or something is more than, those mean if I say I have five more apples than you, that means we take the number of apples you have and add five to it. Another word that's used a lot is increased by, right? Number of apples you have is increased by five. That means, you know. So another one is and. A lot of times you'll see and, you'll say, you know, this and that is, and usually if you see something like that, that's a, uh, that's an addition problem. All right, some words, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about subtraction. All right, so difference, minus, we got subtracted, and some other ones are, you'll see less than, right, or decreased by those are, those are the big main ones that you're gonna run into. Okay, so we've got addition and subtraction. Let's take a look at multiplication and division. 
So multiplication, here we got a dot product right here. We got our multiplication sign when we're gonna use our dot product and our parentheses more than anything now. So the result of a multiplication problem is called a product. And the result of a division problem, I'm over on the right side now, is called a quotient. All right, that's the one that people have a hard time remembering. Um, for products, um, pretty much, you know, multiplied by, that's pretty obvious when you see that, multiplied by, or times, whenever you see times. And you're going to see times a lot. Okay, um, some other ones um, that are not as obvious is if you see somebody say something is doubled, well, that means it's multiplied by two, right? Or tripled, right? Same deal. That would be multiplied by three. You might see the word twice, which is also multiplied by two. And you also might see them say one half of something. Well, when you see one half of something, that means you're multiplying it by one half. If they say one third of something, that would be multiplying it by one third. So there's a lot of language that you'll have to decode, that you'll have to be able to look at it and figure that out. And then there isn't as nearly as much for division as there is for everything else. But the ones that you, you might see occasionally, I don't know what I just wrote there. So you might see split evenly, right? That's kind of the language which they use to teach you what division was, all right? Split evenly, quotient. Um, and again, you might see something like, you know, they might say half of something, right? And if they say half, well, that's another way of saying divided by two. Or if they say, you know, one third, and this is a case where this could also be division, not just multiplication, it can be both. One third would be divided by three, right? If they said one fourth, you could write that one of two ways. You could write it as, you know, one fourth over here, or you could write it as divided by four. And remember, when you're use, writing these and you're using your division signs, you're always going to be writing it as a fraction. Always use your fractions. Okay, let's talk really quick about equals. The big word you are going to see all the time, you'll see equals and you'll see, e, you know, equal to. But the big one you're going to see more than any of those is the word is. They say the sum of 7 and 4 is 11. That's the more kind of natural language that people use to describe this stuff. Most people don't say 7 plus 4 equals 11. They'll say 7 and 4 is 11. That's a lot more normal and what you're going to see in some of these problems. And then with variables, basically variables is just basically any kind of letter. And that's going to usually be up to you. And a lot of times they'll say a number. And when they say a number, generally speaking, you can use N. Okay? And if you want to use something else, you could use X as well. All right. So now when you look at this and it says 8 less than 3 times a number is negative 23. So... If we unpack that now, we got a lot of different things we can use. Well, we know negative 23 is negative 23. Sometimes I like to go backwards on these and start with the is. Well, I know the is is going to be that. And then we got negative 23. So we got that going right there. We got this. We have 8 less than. And we're going to talk about what that is. But just for the purpose of this video, that would be 3 times the number. So we could use 3x or even better yet, I'll use n. 3n minus 8. And if you think about why I'm putting the 8 here and not doing 8 minus 3n, well, think about it. If I said you have 8 less apples than me and I have 12 apples, and I say you have 8 fewer or 8 less you would say 12 minus 8. You wouldn't go 8 minus 12, right? So order is very important with these. And so just by looking at a few of those keywords, right, three times a number, right, looking at all of that, you can assemble an equation.